Good morning, boys and girls. I thought this morning we could start out with a mystery box. I'm sure you've all been missing, guessing what's in the box. Let's see. Oh, there's something in there. All right. Let me read you a clue. It says, they come in a rainbow of colors. Oh, yes. Is it a shirt? Not a shirt. But that's a good guess. Is it grass? It is not grass. Grass usually isn't a rainbow unless you paint it. <laughs> so let's see. It comes, they can come in a rainbow of colors. You find them in the ground. And you can put them in your house. <gasps> yes. Is it worms? It is not worms. Would be extremely thrilled if you brought worms in the house, kind of like rocks, you know, we're not collecting those. All right, let's see what's in the box. How about some flowers? I bet you're all starting to see the pretty flowers coming up. We talked about that with my process, they're springy because we saw the flowers, the daffodils and the crocuses coming up in my yard. The daffodils were yellow and the crocuses were purple. First flowers of the season and they're excited. Today, I have a book for you by Dolly Parton. It says, I am a rainbow. make up our whole world everything we say and do but did each <clears throat> did but did you know each boy and girl is made of colors too <gasps> when I'm tickled pink it means I'm feeling dandy everything is great as sweet as cotton candy mm. but guess what happens when my sister pulls my hair then I turn red and I'm angry as a bear. If your mom says time out, I pout for a minute or two. Then I get bored and sad and I feel kind of old. Sometimes I get jealous when I'm feeling green. That happens when I'm left out of a happy theme. When I'm scared, kids call me yellow, but I find the courage to be a brave fellow. When we play together, it makes me feel so cozy. My mood is joyful and everything is rosy. So I remember, as you go, from hue to hue, that each and every person has feelings, too. It's not always up to you the way that you feel, but how you act is a different deal. So be a rainbow, shine above and filter all your glow through love. It's nature's way, these colors you show. So simply say, I'm a rainbow. And God wants us to be a rainbow. He wants us to spread our love for him and tell others about him, right? Speaking of rainbows, I know you guys have probably been practicing your letters and numbers at home, but 
I want to show you something because I bet you've been going through a lot of paper. So we're going to do some rainbow writing, which means we're going to take a color and we're going to trace. This is my last name, Brown. So we have B, R, O, W, N. And for those of you that are a little bit more progressed in your name, and maybe you can just do it with dots, here's B, R, O, W, N. Now, our rainbow part is when we go back over it with another color. And we make a rainbow on our letters. So you could practice your name this way. You can practice your ABCs and your numbers this way. And that way you're not using as much paper. Now, if you're a four or a five, you should be able to write your name yourself. So if mom or dad draws lines on the paper for you, you should be able to write your name one time, each line with a color, and then the next day you can get that paper out and you can pick a new color and practice your name again. If you're a three, you can trace your name as mom and dad writes it for you. And I know some of my threes, and I bet Mrs. Sparling's and Mrs. White's too, they know how to write their first name. So I expect you to be able to practice that. You guys can do it at school, you can do it at home. I know you can. Now, here is our ABCs. We can do the same thing. Now with my four-year-olds, I'm going to put a letter, letter A here, and then I'm gonna give them a space to write letter A. And you can do the same thing with the rainbow writing. So you can go through all the letters. And again, you can dot them if you need to for your student, if they need that. So they can trace and then they can trace the dots. Same way with lowercase. Now our three-year-olds haven't looked at lowercase yet, but our four-year-olds have started those. And if they're writing their name I would suggest that you do it upper and lower case, just like they will at kindergarten because that is what the kindergarten teacher is going to want to look for. So you might as well start it now and just do it that way. So, so for you to not use as much paper, you can just get this out. And some of these little ones, they're only gonna get through part of these a day. They're not gonna get through the whole page. They're gonna get frustrated and they're gonna get tired and they're gonna to wanna to stop and that's okay. You could always come back to it. The idea is just to keep this sheet, get out a new color and do it again in a different color. Now you can use crayon, you can use markers, you can use colored pencils, whatever you have at home. And if you want to do these in a different color than black, that would be good too. If you do them in like a like pen, and I did mine in Sharpie, so you could do them in pen, so it stands out from the line here, and they can see it a little bit better that it is what they need to trace. Um, that would be my suggestion. So definitely, we want them practicing their letters and numbers, we want them practicing their names, and while you're working on their names, they need to verbally spell their name. So they should be able to tell you their name is B-R-O-W-N when you point to the letters. They should be able to tell you those letters out of order. So if you point over here, they should know W by now, especially the fours. The threes, if, they can, if you can just point to the letter with them and say it with them, they're going to know it for next year. And that's where they're moving towards. So the fours and fives, you should be able to tell mom and dad how to spell your name and the letters in it when they do them out of order. The, the threes, if you can just say it with them so they know what it is. Now I know some of my threes too, they know how to spell their first name, they can tell me. So I want you to be telling mom and dad at home if you know how to do it already, and then you can move on to something else. Another thing about names is you need to make sure that your child knows your name, your actual name, not mom and dad. It's so-and-so Smith, or whatever your first name is and last name. 
so that if for some reason your child gets separated from you, they can tell a, a person what your name is. Not just mom and dad. <laughs> so I hope that that gives you a little bit of help and things to work on at home while you're at home during this time. I wish that we were here. It saddens me that we can't be, but it is what it is and we'll have to make the best of it. So I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.